Do y'all ever wonder who's First of all, you a got, top you gotta bottom introduce yourself. first? You got to introduce yourself. Oh, it's J-Ho. <laughs> <laughs> what you talking about? You don't know me? This is what, episode three and y'all don't know? I am Jay Northcott. And I'm Alexander Jamal. And this is Barber Queer. Awesome. Yeah, it is. Um, okay, so male celebrities, let's uh, talk about them. Yeah, let's let's predict which one, if they were gay... Is a top, bottom, or verse? Okay. I'm going to throw this one out there. Ryan Reynolds, go. Uh, mm. Bottom. Really? Yeah. Why? Yeah. Uh, there's just something about men that are, like, that white and that beautiful that just, like, need somebody to teach them a lesson, you know? True. And, I mean, in Deadpool? Yeah. We, yeah. Saw, we saw the costume. See, I would say top. I feel like something about him just gives me top... That's comfortable in his quote unquote position, I guess. Mm. Okay. What about Zach Efron? What do you think, first of all? I think I agree with Jay. I think he the bottom? he gives me bottom vibes. Um, I think Zach Efron is a definitely verse. <laughs> um, like maybe like top verse, but like really, really loves like do it, having having it both ways. Mm. Yeah. Ever since he uh, spent a lot of time working out and getting like fit, mm. uh, yeah, yeah, maybe he he does give a first five. I don't know. I thought he was a top, but hey. See, I say, I think he's a power bottom. Pow- Zach like Apple? power bottom. <laughs> yeah. I mean, good for him. Yeah, like like to the point where he's just like, like don't message me if you're under. Like nine point five ten inches. <laughs> yeah, he's okay. Wait, so that definitely after he got like muscle for sure. Before like Zac Efron like High School Musical, he was a lady that loved big dick and loved to get fisted, and oh. now he's just like now he's like I'm buff and only want to get fucked by buff big dick dudes. BBC, BBC. <laughs> hey, I didn't say anything. About um, what about <laughs> Nicholas Cage? That's a weird one for you. <laughs> Oh, he's Canadian, right? Is he? Oh, he is. This is gross. I hate that. I didn't know that. I hate that. Dead, dead. Okay, so now you're just over it. <laughs> no, but I still want to know. He gives me... Wait, hold on. Is he Canadian? Or am I thinking of... Who's the other one that, like, I'm confusing him? The the Matrix. Oh, Keanu Reeves? Yes. Keanu Reeves he's is Canadian. Canadian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. We'll let's, take him. We'll take him. Let's do Keanu Reeves first okay. while we figure out if Nicolas Cage is Canadian. Keanu Reeves is definitely some, like, Matrixy top vibes. Like, in the Matrix, inside of you, in and out, you never know where you are. Is this real life? Is this just fantasy? I'm dead. <laughs> Caught in a landslide. No yeah. escape from reality. Okay. Um, I would say, I mean, yeah, he could top me. Yeah. Keanu Reeves or Nicolas Cage? Keanu Reeves. <laughs> so what happened to Nicolas Cage? We're going to do him after we find out if he's uh, Canadian or okay, not. Okay, Keanu Reeves gives me very much, I am I am celibate. I'm asexual. Uh, really? Mm-hmm. No. Do you hear him breaking the game every single time you fucking every play it? Every single time. Oh, so fine, fine. Um, I'm going to say he gives me bottom vibes then. Yeah. Okay, so update. Nicolas Cage is not Canadian. Thank God. He is... Um, so here, he's an American actor, and he was born. Actually, I don't think they were. Yeah, nobody <laughs> uh, Okay, let's do Nicholas Cage. Yeah. I mean, he kind of gives me a daddy vibe yeah. now. Yeah, I saw. I just recently watched Face Off again. Mm-hmm. I um, love that movie. Oh my fucking god! I love that movie. Bruce Willis. I think like Bruce Willis. <gasps> oh, okay. Bruce Willis tops Nicholas Cage. Yes. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. See, I would say he gives me very much top vibes unless he's like high on like, what's that, what's that drink that people drink that's drugs? G. G. Uh, unless he's high on G, then he just wants to get fucked like all night. No, uh, I don't know how I know that. Yeah. <laughs> Weird. Um, do you want to do one more? No, but you, you have to answer the question. <laughs> you can't just like not answer these questions. Uh, Nicholas Cage. I mean, he kind of looks like a sloppy bottom to me. Mm. But, okay, like, fair enough. Okay, what about Idris Elba? Interesting. I think I want him to be a top because I just want him to top me. Didn't he? He was supposed to be something. He was supposed to be the new 007. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I think okay. he still is technically. I think he is. Yeah. It just I don't, hasn't happened yet. Yeah. 
I'm okay. gonna say top. Yeah, he's giving me strong, like yeah, top, oh my god, bad vibe. You know what he gives me? He gives me trans only vibes. No, no, yeah. that's not the game. He, no, he's the kind of person that's on Grinder, no profile picture, mm-hmm. and he's like, you know what, trans only. I don't fuck with men. DL. That's not what he said when he was fucking me last night. <laughs> Did you take pictures? This is my dream. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what a cute little game! It was a cute. So it was cute, yeah. So now, now we'll move, move into the cliffhanger we left you on last week. So last week we ended with talking about open relationships, and today we're going to be focusing on talking about open relationships. And can we fun. add in polyamory to that? Yeah, that's what it is. Uh, I mean, it's, they're not it's, the same they're not, thing. It's not the same, but like, I mean, they're in the sure. same family. Sure, yeah, yeah. Like, we, I think we can, I think we can play with both of those. Cool. Um, so the thing we left on a cliffhanger is you two had a thing once. A thing. Was a thing. was it open? Was it closed? Was it nothing at all? <laughs> Jeho, you can feel free, ladies first. Oh, I'm gonna feel free, ladies first. Um, it was not open it wasn't really closed it was just a thing okay right okay is that anything to add do i have to confirm or deny is no that... so what well, if you want to what happened now though do you want to fight no oh, <laughs> <laughs> and fight <laughs> what happened now though do I, do what, I what, what did you feel did you feel it was an open closed not a relationship what was it it definitely wasn't a relationship we weren't at that point where it was a relationship we were like consistently dating um, was it open? No, 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 not in my aspect. No, cute. Have either of you been in an open relationship? I am gonna say no. Really? Not that I know of. <laughs> I mean, hey, <laughs> I've had some nasty ass men in my life that have been, you know, doing me wrong. So hey, <laughs> but on my end, no. Huh. What about you? Have I been in one? No. Yeah. Wow. So thank you so much for tuning in, guys. Um, That's the end of the episode. <laughs> what about you, Jay? Please tell us your experience with open relationships. Um, I've been in, I've been in two. One was like super recent and it started because we were long distance relationship. Um, and then I think that that kind of just is like, oh, it's easier if we live in two different cities for us to be able to sleep with other people. Um, which is great. And then for, especially because I feel like with the people that I'm dating a lot of the time, they're like, I want to have sex all the time. For some reason, I always find these like fucking sex fiends that are like, I want to have sex three times a day. I'm like, I'm fucking tired. My pussy is tired. I need, I need a nap. I want to cuddle with my cat and I want to watch reality TV. Um, so it's super convenient for me to be in an open relationship, but then it does get very complicated when you're in the same city, especially if you're very afraid of like, you're saying if you're in the same city, like if you're really, if you're, if you're, if you don't want to have the conversations, yeah. Cause you're like, I'm uncomfortable about this. Then you probably shouldn't be in an open relationship. Before you go on, I'm going to ask you, how long were you in this relationship before you guys decided to make it open? Both of them. Uh, the first one was like two months, but I was like 18. So I don't know if that really counts. And then uh, the last one, we were dating for five, five months, six months. And then when I moved, we decided to open it up. Okay. So I don't know. I've never, and like a lot of my friends who are doing good open relationships, like two of my friends have been in an open relationship for six years. Like they weren't open at the beginning. Um, I don't know if that's like the correct or if there's like a correct or wrong way of doing it. I don't think there's ever a correct or wrong way. I, I feel like the only correct way to go about your relationship is if it's correct to the to people in the relationship. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. like no one at any point in time should tell you what's right or wrong for your relationship other than you and your partner. Mm-hmm. True. So I obviously think that there's no how to guide for any of whatever the fuck it is that we're doing in life. <laughs> um, there is like a loose structure, but I mean, it's really up to how it works for you and what works best. And mm-hmm. have you ever been on the other side of an open relationship? Like, like hooked up with a guy or hooked up with somebody that, um, that was in an open relationship? I have. Tell us tomorrow. Tell us all these. So there was many times. <laughs> Take so, one. Um, there was one time it was these two Spanish boys and Spanish. Sorry, Spanish. Do you want, do you want like their like their country? I don't I know. Mean, like they were they were just a fling, a hookup. Okay, sure. So no names. Let, let's just let's for, for the sake of argument, let's say El Salvadorian. Um, but if I'm not mistaken, it was it was one of the boyfriend's birthdays. And that boyfriend was severely attracted to me. So the other boyfriend, 
hit me up asking me if I wanted to have a threesome. And at the time, I was like completely just like tipsy, and I'm like, "Hell the fuck yeah!" They picked me up and we fucked. And sure. I went home, and that was it. And do you think it helped their relationship? Or I don't know. I never talked to them ever since. Oh, but I don't sense. think it did because I don't think it did because you can tell in that moment one of them was more into it than the other one was. Right. See, that's where it can kind of get complicated because you can't really control feelings mm-hmm. yeah they i mean they could have been boyfriends for x amount of years but like let's say you introduce somebody new and like you then all of a sudden catch feelings what are you supposed to do yeah and, and i think that's something that people worry about a lot but don't you think that like um that there's always that fear of being in a relationship that you can catch feelings for somebody else even if you're not sleeping with them like i think that a lot of my friends that are in open relationships are like fucking random strangers on grinder and it's like the amount of intimacy that they want from that person isn't really uh, dating them. It's just like having sex and they, and both of them kind of maybe know that when they're going into it. Um, so I think like the thing, I always catch feelings for people like at the bar when I'm talking to them for two hours, you know, more than like just a one night flame. That's fair. That's comp- so let me ask you a question back to, back to your relationships. Mm-hmm. When, when you guys decided to embark on an open relationship, was it your choice or was it, or was it your request or their request? It was my, it was my request. Okay. Um, because I, um, I was in this one relationship that was long distance when I was younger that wasn't open. And, uh, he always wanted to jerk off on camera. Like he always wanted me to like Skype him and, and do. That's so lame. I don't want to do it. I don't know what it is about it. I just like have no interest in like, calling my partner and like jerking off on camera for them. that or like okay like we're gonna take it like vintage like old school like yeah. phone sex like i can't like the texting not texting like i'm talking like oh. legit phone like we're talking on the phone oh fuck yeah be me mm, yeah me bus yeah, like no, no. <laughs> <laughs> um and after that like after that moment i was like i'm never long distance is gonna be so hard for me so I was like, the one thing I don't want is I want us to have conversations. I want us to do these kind of things and talk on the phone all the time. But like, I don't know if I'll be able to give you the intimacy of, uh, like sex, like sexting or phone sex or like video chatting. It's just not really my thing. And, uh, so I was like, let's open this up. And it was interesting at the beginning because the first person who he slept with, I think was your a, friend, a mutual friend. <gasps> oh. How dare he? And it was like a guy that didn't really know super well, but I knew that I was going to see at parties and stuff like that. And then it's just like, you like kind of look at him and you're like, oh, like you, you fucked my boyfriend. You Thanks. fucked my boyfriend. Thanks. <laughs> hey, you, you fucked my boyfriend. And I was like, and there was like the first moment that I was like, oh, maybe I do get jealous. Cause I was always like, I never get jealous. So then like, how did you handle that? Um, I just had a couple more drinks and asked, asked the guy how having sex with my boyfriend was. And then we had a very funny, jaunty little laugh about it. And then it was yeah. great. Okay. It was adorable. Um, but then, like, like throughout that time, like, I was sleeping with people and he was sleeping with people. But then, like, when we came into the same city, it was, like, uh, it's it, there's something different about it. Because, like, now you're giving up, if, in my opinion, for me, it was, like, you're giving up time with that other per like, with your person to go sleep with somebody else. Because we were, like, I've never had a three-way, so we never, like, played together. We never really did that. Mm-hmm. But, like, I remember one night he went to a bathhouse and slept with, like, like was in a sauna, like, jerking off fucking 12 men and just dick everywhere. And, uh, and then I went home with this boy that looked like Pete Wentz and had a huge penis. And I was such a pop punk kid that it was like my all time dream. And when I told him, he was like, your all time dream sleeping with this guy. I was like, well, I love having sex with you. It was just like this weird fantasy of this like little pop punk boy with this giant penis and a tattoo underneath its fucking belly button. I was like, you're gross and i love that about you i come from a trailer park you know my boyfriend my boyfriend at that time i was like you're my forever he's just a pop punk boy band that i like <laughs> listening to uh, uh, so then so then so what went wrong in that situation because what i'm gathering from that is that first of all it started off by you you somewhat compromising and somewhat giving him the leeway because you couldn't provide to him what he needed Mm -hmm. but then once he came back to the city it was like now feelings are involved now there's jealousy coming in right because i can see it exactly Mm -hmm. so now my question for you is did you guys ever have that conversation of like the terms and agreement of yeah we always said that we called it we were so fucking pretentious we used to call it an open conversation relationship oh lord (laughs) did you guys sign anything Uh, (laughs) nba no uh but it was uh 
the only thing that started happening is I, uh, I have a really hard time telling the truth sometimes. Okay. Um, and just because like, you know, like, you know, like when you're a kid and you get caught, like grabbing a cookie out of a cookie jar and your mom's like, Hey, and you're like, I wasn't even doing anything. Yeah. It's kind of like that. Like I like hung out with this boy when I was in New York that like, I used to have a thing with and I didn't even sleep with him. We'd be just so much to go see a play. And there's like, there was slowly like a loss of trust that happened in our relationship. And there was also me like not Very being able life. to trust him. Right. Like, yeah. and like, so both of us, both of us had like these trust issues that we should have at one point probably been like, our trust issues are really not good right now. Maybe we should stop fucking other people. Um, and we didn't do that because I didn't, I don't think I ever really wanted to be in a relationship anyway, but, um, but yeah. So if you had to go about it differently and like, mm-hmm. let's say, for example, if you were speaking to your younger self, what advice would you give to your younger self in order to prevent those trust issues from growing? Um, I think what I'm trying to take into my life even right now is like that I always, I lie to take care of people sometimes. I'm like, I like try to like squeeze the truth or like, fuck, like just like make the truth something different. Okay. Um, I mean, the truth hurt. Yeah. Cause I feel like the truth will really hurt. But actually what I found out, especially recently is like the truth doesn't hurt as much as lying to somebody and then finding out the truth. Um, and then you just kind of have to be honest and open with a lot of things. Right. And if you're not, if you're not that way, if you're just like, I mean, when I was a kid, I was just a compulsive liar. I love lying. I used to lie about like my cat saving me from a fire and that I had like 13, <laughs> like 13 kids and I had a parrot at home and like all this fucking stuff. And, uh, but now I'm like that, 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 uh, tactic of trying to avoid like your trauma doesn't work anymore. So y'all got to stop. Yeah. I think the best thing, especially in an open relationship, like you have to just make sure a, the communication is there Mm -hmm. or no, actually, you know what? A is trust Mm -hmm. is there. Then B communication. I think those go hand in hand. And I think those things, and then maybe C, I would want to say time. Mm -hmm. So if you have trust communication and at least some sort of time under your belt, I feel like those would be a good foundation for some sort of open relationship. Yeah. At least you you have those to kind of fall back on. And then if anything does go wrong, you can kind of attend to it and fix it. Yeah. I really like that way you said with time, because I know like some of my friends that are just like fucking like six times a week with different people and their partner. I'm like, who, who has the time? Like I do not, I was like, I don't have the time to work 40 hours a week and have sex with more than my, just my partner. What, 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 what do you mean by time? Like, cause what, like, I was going to ask you the same thing about time before you said that, but I was like, by time, do you mean like the so uh, time I mean, like the relationship can't be like a new relationship. Oh, for so you're saying that. that right. just, <laughs> so you're, okay. Like there has to be some sort of like in my mind, I think if you've been dating for, I want to say minimum. A few years. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Cause that'll give you time. You, you probably live together. You probably have lived together. You, you know each other by that point. Mm-hmm. You know, your ins and outs. Um, you know what the other partner is maybe lacking that maybe you can't provide. Um, and then that way I feel you just, you just kind of know each other a lot better. And then mm-hmm. like you'll be able to, if something does go wrong, like what happened to you in your relationship, then because you know them already, you've spent all this time together, like building upon your relationship, then it's easier to kind of address the issue. Right. Right. Yeah. That makes complete sense to me. So now another thing I want to know is why, why do you find that relationships have become the norm? Open relationships have become the norm within the gay community. I don't know if they have become the norm. I think a lot, I think a lot of people are trying something new because we see that like, monogamy doesn't really work. Like most of our parents are divorced okay. or we're never together. Um, we see that monogamy is, is, is super complicated and that open relationships are also complicated, but I think we're both, we're just, I think restructuring what relationships look like. So, um, good point on monogamy. I have here, I want to talk about monogamy in the gay community versus mm-hmm. the straight community. And I think, Back when I was younger, obviously, like, we're taught this. We are taught that monogamy, like, even when you think about it, when we're fucking, like, toddlers, the first thing we're shown is, like, Disney movies Mm -hmm. where, you know, the prince and the princess get together and they get married and they live happily ever after. That is the first thing we're fucking taught. Right. But, like, as, you know, I've gotten older, 
And that's why I can say that like I understand open relationships a lot more now that I'm older because realistically monogamy isn't natural. No. And when you look at it, like a lot of mammals and animals in the world don't like they aren't monogamous. Like monogamy is not a thing. So right. and it's only a, and like if there is animals that are monogamous, it's out of like a, not out of like love it's out of like necessity mm-hmm. um, out of like the need of like another thing taking care of you or knowing that you can uh knowing that the, the children that you're having are very fruitful so you want to stay that goose wants to stay with the other goose that penguin wants to stay with that other penguin it's mostly birds too which is weird fucking birds, fucking birds. <laughs> <laughs> that being said though i do like i the thing is like i see both sides of it and like i understand the the construct of monogamy and how we're taught it. And I also understand that like, it's not natural for us, but because I think because for me, from my personal experience, because I've just grown up that way, I just can't kind of break out of it. So I've been in a relationship. Yeah. Like if I am really into you and I'm like, I just, I'm in a relationship with you. Like I just can't really find it in my mind to just be like, you know what? It's okay. Go off and just go fuck wherever you want. Have you been in a relationship where you and your partner have a three-way? No. No. Have I had a three-way with a partner? Yes, I actually have. Um, do you want to know about that? Or? Yeah, how did that go? Yeah, how, how was it? Okay, so it was weird. So it was actually in my long-term relationship. So when we first got together, um, so I'm not the kind of guy to, uh, to say it's a struggle. I understand there's a process things like that. But there was one time when we were at his house and one of his friends were there and all of a sudden he initiated for us three to play around. Um, me being me, I kind of engaged, but I was not engaged. If that makes sense, it mm-hmm. was extremely uncomfortable. I didn't want it, blah, blah, blah. And I could tell that for some odd reason, he's doing this in order to satisfy me. Mm. So then I ended up just removing myself from the situation. And then we had a conversation about it. And he had said that to me. He was like, I, I just didn't feel like I was satisfying you. So I wanted to give this to you. And I'm like, you know what? Fair. But that's not the kind of guy that I am. I'm like, if, if we have to sit here and we have to work on having sex, which if you're not that experienced, then any, any person that's fucking you should kind of expect that. Okay, wait. So there are a couple things wrong with that story. Okay. Like, <laughs> first of all, how does one just start this? Like, was he just like, hey, like you're all in a room and they're just like, oh, like, let's just fuck my friend? Or were you all drinking? Like, was that the vibe? Like, what? Like, how did it? I don't think we were drinking. It was, um, no, no, it was. We were, from what I remember, we were kissing. And then he just looks at his friend and says, hey, come. Okay, so then second point is, then you guys have the conversation afterwards. Why didn't he just have this conversation with you beforehand? Mm-hmm. Because obviously you felt uncomfortable. And then his whole thing was he wanted to give this to you because he wasn't satisfying you. Mind you, at this time, when we, when we first got together, we were really young. Like I, I was probably like 21, 22. Um, so we we're both still figuring out how to be in a relationship. At that time, I had already been in a relationship, but I was his first boyfriend ever. So like, there were like, expecting him to understand how a relationship functions wasn't something that was engraved in our relationship. So like, it wasn't that big of a deal to me, but anyway, we spoke about it. I let him know. I'm like, dude, like if you're, if, if your body is not that accustomed to having sex yet, like we have all the time in the world. Like mm-hmm. I'm, I'm not sitting here. I don't expect to just be here on, on this Tuesday. You know what I mean? Like I'm dating you and it is what it is. We have all the time in the world. So that was that. Anyway, then there was one time me and the same boy were in Montreal And I don't remember how the conversation came up, but then the conversation came up about going on Grindr and finding a third. Mm -hmm. And we did. Um, The boy was hella cute. Um, I remember I went downstairs to pick him up from the hotel and in the elevator, (laughs) he and I were messing around a little bit. Then we got to the room, we were having a little chat and then things just started to happen. And then I remember myself, I was like, I was a little bit uncomfortable watching him fuck my man because again the same boyfriend that was telling me that he couldn't take my dick because he was such an unprofessional bottom suddenly now he's 
riding this man's dick like it's candy. Okay, so you were the problem. Yeah, that's yeah. probably. And this man's dick was definitely like wasn't longer than mine, but it was a lot thicker than mine. So I remember looking at him like, hmm. So then me being the cocky, not the cocky, me being the petty fucker that I am, I was like, cool. You know what? You sit there and watch me plow this motherfucker like it's nothing. And I fucked this boy from from Saturday to Tuesday. And then I looked at him like, you just let that power bottom fuck you. <laughs> and moved on. God. Uh, <laughs> I have a thing with, uh, I, I've never, as I said earlier, I've never had a three way, but I have a thing for couples. Like I really like, there's something about like the unattainability. Uh, God, I have some, <laughs> some real some issues, deep seated issues. Okay, yes, I'm deep. living. Um, and like two of my friends, like in one in Calgary and one here in, in Toronto that I like always end up like, almost hooking up with a couple. Why almost? Why didn't you just do it? Well, the first time, the first time, the thing that was super weird about it was, it was, we were like in the bedroom, everybody was like smoking weed, we were in a hotel, everything was like kind of cool and chill. I was working on a show there and they came up to visit me. It was in Edmonton and they came up to visit me from Calgary and uh, and then we were hanging out and then all of a sudden one of the boys just starts like, me and the boy before they started dating kind of had a thing. Um, We never had sex, but we were like kind of fooled around and then all of a sudden I'm just blowing him on the bed and asking my friend, uh, person, I almost said his name. Um, I was like, I like looked at him and I was like, are you okay with this? And he's like, yeah, yeah. And he's like, but wait, see, this is the thing. It's like a mid blow job. You're like, Hey, are you good? Like, (laughs) why don't y'all have these conversations beforehand? Like, Hey, like, is it okay if your boyfriend, like, you know, yeah. Could do better, you know, could ask. A learning experience. It was a learning experience. What happened afterwards? Was he okay with it or no? Uh, he said, yeah. But then I was like, do you want to come over and join? And he was like, no, I'm just going to sit here. And he's smoking out the window and kind of crying. And, and I was not crying, but like. I was, you know, he wasn't okay. He was not happy. But and like, what is he going to say? Like, no, like, I'm not good with it. Like. Yeah. Like, well, I'm like, well, I'm like, well, I'm like, oh, okay. Well, I'm, well, I'm sucking your voice. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> learning we're all learning and okay. uh okay. and then the next one is here like there's these two boys that are like my like uh part of my friend group and they just started dating like maybe six months ago and every time we hang out i like i wanted to fuck this boy for so long and now he's in this relationship and i was like oh it's never gonna happen they're in a closed relationship but now they're like slowly opening up this relationship and i'm like and you're creeping in that's all like, do i let these two giant dicks boys just have their way with me Hmm. I guess we'll find out. So hold on, I want to ask you guys a question. Next Stay time. tuned. <laughs> I want to ask you guys a question because yeah. I, I find that open relationships, yes, they are becoming a lot more common within like the heterosexual community. Mm-hmm. But I find that it's extremely predominant within the LGBTQ community. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, the, the my understanding of it or my reasoning that I've allowed myself to believe is that it's because of the world that we live in, especially because of social media, right? Like, as males, we're already sexual beings as it is. And then everything that we do on social media, everything that we do at clubs, parties, mm-hmm. it's all based on a sexual vibe. So do you feel like this this norm of open relationships has come along simply because we've over-sexualized our community and we don't know how to condone ourselves in a sense? Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't. I wouldn't say that we've over-sexualized ourselves. Like, I think it all goes back to, like, the straight community versus gay community. Like, I think, obviously, open relationships and, like, swingers have been around for Mm -hmm. so many years. But it's, in the straight community, it's been so hush-hush. And I think the only difference is in the gay community, it's just much more open and talked about, where it's, like, I think in the gay community, there's just no shame. Whereas in the straight community couples are ashamed to do that but they still will like okay. have you heard you've seen or heard of those parties where straight people will go and like they'll be masked or whatever oh, yeah. and like you it's all anonymous but like you're still you know fucking around yeah yeah and i mean oasis oasis in toronto which is a sex club in toronto uh for straight people it's still fucking thriving like they're not right now obviously covid but like COVID. my <laughs> COVID, ruining sex clubs for everyone. I don't know who that is. Uh, but I, I, I'm very, uh, I'm interested in even talking to my roommate. She like, she talks a lot about like her and like finding her new like sexual liberation as a woman because there's a lot. She's straight? Of, yeah. Uh, she's queer. She's bi. And, uh, but it was, it was interesting just to hear her talk about like being like, 
do you know what? Like I'm being proud of masturbating and I'm proud of this and I'm proud of the people who I have sex with and I'm proud that I'm like a sexual person. And I think that's where the change is coming right now. And a lot of it is like, and that's still something that I'm working on as a human being is that I don't feel like I'm like super, super proud of like, like sex, like sex makes me nervous still, you know, I still get like sometimes awkward about it. And like a lot of the times when I do have sex, I'm drunk because it just makes it just that little bit easier um, and makes that like awkwardness kind of go away. And I think that I hope that what these open relationships are like this new discovery of like what relationships look like is actually um, this like revolution in the way that we like are liberating ourselves from this like normative idea of what marriage looks like and what sex looks like and what being gay looks like and what being straight looks like. So let me ask you a question only because you're the only one that had an open relationship. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like when you had an open relationship in those two situations that when you open it up, it, it saved your relationship for however long it was still lasting for? Saved. Um, like if you didn't yeah. open it up, would your relationship have ended sooner? I, I don't, I don't know, to be honest. I, I think cause, uh, one of them was six months, then like the last person was a year and a half. And, and, uh, that was the longest relationship of the last, the longest I've been like with one person. Um, so I always have this feeling of wanting to run away from relationships. So, uh, <laughs> Trauma, trauma, trauma. Um, so I'm trying to, like, I, I'm very curious what a long-term monogamous relationship would look like for me, um, or a long-term open relationship would look like for me. Um, I think, but I do, I like the change. I think the change was warranted. I think we needed it because we didn't live close together. Fair but then enough. I think that we needed to be okay with changing it again if we felt like we needed to. And I don't think we gave ourselves that permission. Interesting. Yeah. Okay, so do you think that, like, the perception of open relationships from someone that is on the outside, do you think that they see it as maybe something that's lacking in your relationship that, like, you can't get from your partner or... And I think that's okay, you know? Like, I don't think one person can give, like, the other person everything they need. Like, if, like, you know, like, like the soulmate that gives you everything you've ever needed... You That's, don't believe in like the no. one soulmate for one person, Listen, like there's one okay. person out there. This is my theory. This is my theory. Okay. So there's Karen and her <laughs> husband, Bob, that. right? Mm -hmm. Karen and Bob love each other. They've been together for like 25 years. They've been best friends. They like love each other. They have three they kids. Guess they have a white picket fence. White picket fence, fucking three and a half bathrooms in their house. Like they are living the life. They have three kids. Their life's going great, right? All of a sudden... Bob, there she is. Yeah, right there in the house that we can see outside the window. Bob is like, Hey, I want to go see Need for Speed 2. And Karen's like, I fucking don't like Need for Speed. I don't want to go see Need for Speed. And he's like, Babe, come on, do this for me. And she's like, I hate driving. It makes me anxious. Blah, blah, blah. He's like, Okay, well, then I'm going to call my friend Bill and he's going to come see this movie with me. And she's like, Okay, go see the movie with Bill. Have a great time. He comes back. She goes, How was your time watching Need for Speed 2? You know, it was amazing. Me and Bill had a really great conversation about it that me and you would have never had. She goes, great. Awesome. Cause I didn't miss out on anything. He said, great. And I enjoyed my time. And then they're still in love. But if this bitch had to go see Need for Speed two, three, four, five, six, she would, she would start getting pissy about it. Right. But now he has Bill to go see Need for Speed. So sometimes I think open relationships, this is my metaphor for open relationships. <laughs> Yeah, because I'm sitting here trying to just like, I understand. It. I get it, and I get what you're trying to say. But also in my mind, as you were telling me your metaphor, I'm just like thinking about like that a relationship is give and take. A relationship is you have to compromise. A relationship is that sort mm -hmm. of thing. So if Karen doesn't want to go see Needs for Speed, like she can go see it. She can go see the first one, mm -hmm. and maybe then have a conversation. Be like, okay. And she did. That's why it was Need for Speed 2. Oh, okay. She saw the first one. She didn't like it. <laughs> okay. Okay, well, carry on. That, I, that's it. That's all I got. That's, that's, my, that's my metaphor for the day. Okay, um, I, 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 do think, I do think people look at people in open relationships a little bit differently. Because um, I know I used to. Mm -hmm. um, I, I used to always say to myself, and why are you even in a relationship? But now I, like, now I completely agree. I'm like, not... Not everyone is going to be able to be completely satisfied with one person, mm -hmm. but their soul desires and their primary desires are satisfied by that one person. Right. And now those two individuals decided to speak upon it and they felt like it was okay for them to open up the relationship and they are both 
completely satisfied with it. So with that, who am I to judge? Absolutely. And I, and I, and I think that we do have to look at is a lot of people are like open relationships never work. And that's a lie. Like I have like these old white men that I hang out with that are 65. They've been married, not where they've been together for like almost 35 years Mm -hmm. and have been open almost the entire time. Mm -hmm. And they're so fucking happy. My two best friends have been in an open relationship for six years and their relationship just fucking works. Dude, I had sex with this one guy, I'll never forget, down on Queen and Spadina. Sexy motherfucker, like sexy. Mm-hmm. I knew he was in a relationship. Um, there was the, nothing to hide about it, but his man wasn't there, obviously. And after we had sex, um, me being the ignorant person that I am, I decided to question him on his relationship. Like, so, like, does this not make your boyfriend uncomfortable? Like, mm-hmm. do you tell your boyfriend that I was here? Like, it is what it is. Like, we, like, we're completely open, all this kind of stuff. And I just started questioning him on the strength of his relationship in that moment. And he, he basically just expressed to me how, if anything, it's made their companionship 10 times more and mm-hmm. it's removed the need for sex in the relationship. And the importance around it. So yes, they still have sex, mm-hmm. but is the relationship, pressure. yeah, but is the relationship focused on sex? Is it based on sex? Absolutely not. If anything, that's now become trivial and everything else in life has taken precedent, right? And to me, that's, to me, that's, that's a beautiful thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, when you can sit here, remove the importance of sex and make even just baby hand me the remote control, mm-hmm. make that 10 times more valuable than just this act of sex. To me, that's, that's, that's beautiful. I love that. Okay. You guys love that. I just, for me, (laughs) I can, no matter how, like, and I've said this, like, I understand both sides and I get it. And the more, like, I talk about it, the more I, I get older, like, I understand it. Personally, for me, I just can not. Like, there is just something, maybe it's just my emotional side that I'm just too emotional, Mm -hmm. but I just, I can't, like, I, cannot be in a relationship with somebody and know that they are getting their needs met from somebody else. Like, right. Why can I but, not hold on, hold on, hold on, all on. of your needs? Hold on. So flip the script a little bit. So now let's say, for example, you love a man. You really love his entire being. You love how he treats you. You love the way he treats his family. You guys have this, this strong, quote unquote, soulmate connection. Yes. But something that he is doing is not satisfying you sexually he's not asking for an open relationship but you're not satisfied sexually okay what now happens then? so then i would have a conversation with him and i'd be like look hey this is not satisfying what if it was something as 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 unfixable as his dick being too small meaning that he can't can't grow into one sec small dicks now and i have slept with a lot like a man no with small, small dicks, dicks are not cool. that are not okay perfect i just but, want to put that out there but some people we are not size queens here <laughs> no. some of us may be j-hope hey, um, anyway no. but listen some people need a big dick right like n- not saying that the person with the small dick is less adequate you know I've it's just that, that yeah it's just that the bottom wants a big dick right. so if if you wanted 12 inches and he was a and he was a four but you loved him Okay, well then fine. Let's go with your hypothetical situation. Yes. Then w- there's ways in my mind to work around that. There's toys, there's mm-hmm. other things that you can do, but like for me, fisting. right off the bat, yeah, <laughs> I mean, you always go right down to fisting. fisting. But right off the bat, like for me, an open relationship is not like that would maybe be like the last resort. Right. It's not like the first thing I'm thinking of. Yeah, and I'm going to say that I like I super 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 respect that like i like for me we obviously see relationships a tiny bit different but i would never be like you're gross for wanting monogamy and yeah. and i think that's the same outlook that we need to give to people that are in open relationships it's like it's not gross or it's not wrong what you're doing it's just different than the way that i approach relationships true that's great because mm-hmm. we're all different and that being said like i'm not gonna sit here and be like well that will never work for me like yeah. i'm so opposed to it yeah. i like no like who knows maybe down the road 30 or 40 years like it may work for me I- and if you're in an open conversation relationship then <laughs> never mind. hold on so we, we we haven't touched upon paul yet. yeah i was gonna, i was gonna bring up derek Barry actually Oh, that was the first place. Well, I was go ahead, around. go for it. Well, you know what? Derek Barry is dating some thunderfuck, Nebraska thunderfuck, and and her boyfriend, and they've been in a thruple for like. Can I just she, say that I yeah. hate the word thruple? Why? I don't know. It's she like called, I think it's kind of sounds like the thruple. Like just say it. Say it, Jamal. 
Thrubble. <laughs> I like it. I think it's fine. So they've Sounds been, like a movie. So they've been in a three, sorry, they've been in a three-way relationship for like two years, I think, like for a while. And uh, I think they're super happy. I don't know anybody. I don't know if I've met, oh, my tattoo artist that tattooed my thighs. And the only reason there he tattooed my thighs is because I wanted him to get as close to my dick as possible while he tattooed me because I was in love with him. Amazing. Um, he was dating this, these two guys in Vancouver that were like older men that just like, I think skull fucked him. I don't know. He like, I think he liked a lot of BDSM. Um, but like that was, they were like, they were in a relationship, the three of them. And then the two of them broke up with him. Oh, because they were in a relationship before, right? Yeah. But like, um, but like you know what? We don't really need you. <laughs> we're actually okay now. Thank you, though. And so, Thank you. so I don't really, I don't really know how I, I don't think. Could you? Do you think you could do a thruple? No. Do you think you could do a thruple? I am gonna decline. Yeah, I don't think I would have a big enough bed. Not even just that. For me, it's like if if I if I truly like, could I fuck two guys at once? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's not that complicated, mm-hmm. but could I invest my heart into two different people at once? That's a lot of emotion. Yeah, yeah, I couldn't do it. Like it's it's hard enough for me to fall in love with one person, yet alone two. Right, and I'm I'm so insecure that all I would, be, and I also am like super competitive. All I want, all I would want, is both of them to like me the most. Right, but okay. not like each other. Like they can like each other, but they like me more. Like if it was to pick between, like if it was Sophie's choice, like. Both of them would pick me, you know? Interesting. Did you answer the question if you could do it? I, I said no, but you know what? Now that we're having this conversation about polyamory, like if I had a, if I had a gun to my head and I had to choose polyamory or an open relationship, I think I would choose an open relationship because then that way I know that like whatever, we're fucking whoever we're fucking and then like that's it. They can leave mm-hmm. and then we're just together. Right. But like in a polyamorous relationship or a rubble, if you will, like you're s- together with these two people. Like, I, I don't know. I just, I have in my mind, it just doesn't like, or it doesn't, right. it's a, or at least it's a lot of work. Yeah. It's definitely, I would think it is a lot of work. Like one person is a lot of work. So much work. I, I wish, I wish we had someone here who was in a polyamorous relationship. Cause I feel like, great. We didn't get anything out of that. I, I would like to know like what they, how they, how they think, how they right. feel. They probably, you know what? It works for me. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. But I would like to know why, like, like, like how did you allow your mind to evolve to that aspect? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean, like, what am I missing? Right. What am I not seeing? Like what, what groundwork did you have to lay? Was, was it like a, a two way relationship and then it started as open relationship right. and then one person kind of just fit the mold perfectly. Yeah. Maybe that's, that's like the evolution of it. Thank you. Do you know what? Okay. We need to make apps more inclusive. Do you know what apps should be doing right now? You should be able to like have a throuple option that you could like meet two people at the same time True. and go like, on a three way date. Like, like male, that. male seeking male. Yeah. Actually, yeah, yeah. I, I think Grinder has the option of group conversation. You make a group, but that's Grinder. You're just there to fucking fist. You're not so you're saying like Tinder should have fucking fist. Even on Tinder, you can have a group conversation. Can you? Yeah. I don't think so. Well, I know at one point you had like Tinder like parties where it would say like these four people were together. Oh. I don't, I don't know if that's still exists. I never got Tinder gold. I don't know. I never paid for that shit either. Sure, Brenda. You tried me. Sure. <laughs> I'm not that desperate to be paying for hey, swipe surge. Hey, you can, I, it's not desperate. It's um, economical. I don't know. It's whatever you want. Oh. Okay, do you pay for Grinder Extra? So I did this last time because they got me. So this is what happened. Oh, so this, no, this is literally what happened. Mm-hmm. So it, it gave me that pop-up, seven days free. But I had already had the seven days free. And they didn't tell me that once you have the seven days free, you can't have the seven days free again. So instead of giving me the free trial again, it immediately charged me for the month. Mm-hmm. So uh, me being the Karen that I am, I'm emailing left, right, and center. Like, I want a refund. I want to talk to the manager. Mm-hmm. At no point is anybody replying. So as of right now, I have Grinder Extra. Yes, I do. You know it. I do, and I paid about thirty something dollars for it. Yeah, somebody told me that it was like seventy or eighty dollars now for the year. Yeah, for the year oh, or for the Lord. unlimited. There's more. There's options. There's a grander, extra, unlimited, blah blah. I mean, they're making a killing. Yeah, fuck yeah, good for them. There's a magazine here that my friend works at that they they own Squirt. It's like a Squirt. it's like a it's like a hookup app essentially that like Squirt. You mean Squirt? Squirt. Yeah, I heard Squirt. 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 Squirt, like, like, like dress. Squirt. squirt. Oh, skirt. <laughs> no, 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 squirt. And they they pay for their online magazine through you, like through the people that use squirt. Oh, amazing. Yeah, 
Fuck yeah. That's cute. Using sex to make art. Why not? That's really cute. Um, so is there anything else you guys want to ask? I think we had a really nice conversation. I think we fucking nailed it. Um, Again, I just wish we had a polyamorous person. But maybe we, we will in the future. You know what? We'll find if one. you're polyamorous yeah. or in a polyamorous relationship, like hit us up. We'd yeah. love to talk to you. If you're a thruple, if you are even in an open relationship, like let's have a conversation. Amen. If you're in an open relationship or a thruple, show us your dick. <laughs> Send us your dick pic. Your are yeah. Um So are we all in a consensus that next week we will be talking about HIV? Yeah, I think that's a beautiful thing to talk about. And interesting enough, uh, last night I was talking to somebody on Grinder who said, do you want to have sex? Just to let you know I'm HIV positive. I Don't tell sex. us your reaction. I know, I won't. Leave it at that. Leave it at that. Because Wait that, until next week. Because that is a common thing nowadays and everyone's reaction is different. Mm-hmm. So, we'll But you see. know what? I want to say like, good for him for like being out and open and yeah. honest about it because I feel like a lot of people won't be. I know, but the thing is, is none of these people, like, the one thing that I will say with anybody that is HIV positive is none of them are out to hurt somebody else. And I think some people do that too. They're like sneaky little villains that are trying to like get everybody right. positive. It's not true. Right. Nor should anybody ever feel or shy away from disclosing their status because I'm a firm believer that your status doesn't identify you as an individual. Absolutely. It's just an aspect of who you are. Okay. Amen. So next week you'll hear my reaction. Uh, thanks so much for joining us at Barber Queers. This has been Jay Northcott. It's Jay Ho. Alexander Jamal. Peace out. We'll Bye. see you next week. Bye. So original. I know. <laughs> <laughs>